Hello, and welcome to part two of setting up OBS for Twitch using my personal streaming settings and recommendations. Today we will be covering how to set up a basic scene. So first things first, under scenes, you can right click in the box, add a scene. You can add as many scenes as you'd like. Uh, you can right click on the scene, change the order by moving it up or down. Uh, you can move it to the top or bottom. And you can also set a hotkey, copy, rename, or remove the scene. Uh, with that out of the way, more importantly, the sources. So if you right click on the box under sources, you'll get this add menu and then the drop down menu for all of the default capture devices that come with OBS. So before we get into showing, you know, each each one of these, I think we should just take a, a minute to explain, you know, as far as capturing games, what's going to be the most efficient means to do so. Um, so the three things that you'll be using is window capture, monitor capture, and game capture. Um, my recommendation is to use either window capture or game capture and to avoid monitor capture at all costs. Um, window capture and game capture are the most efficient means of capturing uh, games or anything in general. And unless you're on Windows 8, monitor capture does perform pretty well. It utilizes some extra DirectX features that aren't present in Windows 7. So on Windows 8 it might be a little bit better, but since I'm running Windows 7, I really can't comment further on it. Uh, so if you're running Windows 8, maybe give it a shot. Um, note that if you're capturing a game in full screen mode, game capture is the only method that is able to do so. So if you're running your game in full screen, use game capture. I recommend game capture almost always. Uh, window capture. Uh, window capture is a very efficient method of capturing uh, only a single window. So if you wanted to capture, well, OBS doesn't recognize its own software, but if you wanted to capture the OBS window, you would use window capture. Um, when, able, when arrow is enabled, it is it, it performs much better. So you should always have Windows Arrow enabled when using Window Capture. Um, on Windows 8, Arrow is enabled by default, so um, you really won't have to worry about that. Windows 8 um, also, like I said, uses those direct DirectX features that OBS has uh, implemented into their system that um, en enables it to perform better. So that's just something, I guess, worth noting. Um, in general, window capture is almost as good as game capture. It's far more stable. Um, however, you cannot capture games in full screen mode. Uh, running games in, say, a borderless or window mode, however, uh, will work just fine for window capture. Um, it's the most stable and efficient method of capturing. However, game capture is the most efficient method when capturing games. So since you're streaming games to Twitch, as I said, I recommend game capture almost always. Um, so basically what happens is uh, game capture has to inject itself into the game process to capture frames directly from the game. So it's not guaranteed to be stable. So maybe on you know certain games it might it might not work properly, it might crash. So that's why sometimes you might want to use window capture instead. Uh, it's also worth noting that game capture only captures DirectX 8, 9, 10, 10.1, 11, and OpenGL applications. So let's say you were running an old DOSBox game that runs DirectDraw. OBS isn't going to be able to capture it in general because OBS utilizes DirectX and OpenGL. Uh, maybe we'll get into a tutorial on how, how to capture uh, DOSBox games later on. But, okay, so with that, with that out of the way, as I said, avoid monitor capture, use window capture, or game capture. If you were to use monitor capture, just as an, uh, for instance, it gives you this big prompt saying, hey, arrow is enabled, you should disable arrow. Do not use arrow. Okay, yeah, well, I want to use it anyway. Oh, hey, <laughs> arrow is enabled, what are you thinking? Don't use arrow. Yes, I understand. So, if I preview this stream, you're going to see the FPS is tanked down here to 16 FPS. As soon as I shut this off, boom, it jumps back up to 30. So, as I said, it's very CPU intensive on Windows 7. Um, on Windows 8, it, 
it probably will be just fine. But if you're using Windows 7, always disable Arrow, and you can do so by going under your video settings and disabling Arrow. So, with that out of the way, we're going to remove this source because we're not going to use it. Uh, let's go ahead and do a window capture. So under window capture, you have this drop-down menu. This is going to show all the current applications that are open and running. Uh, right now I have my recording software, my word pad for my uh, little script, and uh, open broadcaster software index uh, Google Chrome. So I'm going to select that. This is uh, just basically OBS. Let me go ahead and show you. So as you can see, I have it open on OBS over there, and you can see the mouse moving around. I can scroll up and down. It's capturing this uh, entire window from here all the way around the edge. So if we go into Window Capture, go into Properties, you'll see there's an inner window and an outer window. The outer window is just the border around the edge of the window. Uh, the inner window is, you know, inside of that border. Capture mouse cursor is pretty self-explanatory. It just shows the mouse or doesn't. Uh, capture layered windows. So let's say, um, when able, uh, when arrow is disabled, right? So it'll capture uh, multiple windows on top of each other. I don't think it works when arrow is enabled. Um, yeah, and it even says in here, only enable this if you are unable to capture a specific application. So you shouldn't need this whatsoever. I've never had to have that selected. Compatibility mode. This is in case you have a multiple GPU setup. So let's say you know your your laptop or your computer has multiple video cards. Uh, each video card is going to render each frame separately, and OBS is going to have a little bit of trouble trying to figure out which frames what and put where to put it. So you would enable this as a last means to to get that to work properly. And what it's going to do is store the frames onto your RAM before injecting it into your OBS scene. So, uh, like I said, only use that if you have multiple GPU setups. You shouldn't need this otherwise. The gamma is the brightness of the window, so if I turn it up, you see the brightness goes up, I turn it down, the brightness goes down. Uh, point filtering. This is important if you're going to be resizing your uh, image. So, I'm going to select it, click OK, and if I select Edit Scene, you see this red box pops up. And say I was streaming, and I was doing this while I was streaming. Um, a lot of this might start to get a little, and there might be some issues. Uh, so point filtering is going to basically make it so your image is more crisp as you're, you know, resizing it. Um, generally, you won't necessarily need it. I use it whenever I have to do some sort of chroma key or something like that. So uh, it is useful under certain uh, instances. Uh, opacity is your transparency. So, you know, if I turn it down, you see the window gets transparent and I can turn it back up and it'll be fully transparent, or not transparent, I should say. Subregion, so this is important. Um, if I go into here, whoops, go into properties, and I select subregion, right? I can select the region and this white box shows up. This is basically a means of cropping your window. So I can move this around and crop this window Let's say I just wanted to capture the uh, the little uh, video thing that's here, right? So I can do that, and boom. Now you see that's the only thing capturing. However, if you scroll, it's, it's still capturing this specific spot on your window. Also, something worth noting, if you resize your window while using window capture, a lot of strange bugs start to happen. So you see, OBS is having a little bit of trouble figuring out what the heck you just did. Basically what it's doing is it's trying to render that big frame instead of rendering the small frame. So if you ever resize your window, make sure you open up your properties and close them again. And it'll uh, it'll fix that. Um, there you go. Also, uh, chroma uh, color key is just a chroma key. So right now it's selected to white. So as you can see, all of the white background is missing and there's a little bit of a texture here so that's what you're seeing there uh, so let's say for instance with the chroma key you wanted to get rid of, of some of that texture you can change the similarity which is gonna change the variance of the color so it'll start to capture some of the grays uh, some of the you know 
the off-white colors and give you a better chroma. Blend is just going to blend the edges of, let's say, this lettering here. So that's that. Um, that's window capture. Let's go ahead and show you game capture. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to open up a game. So I'm going to open up FTL. It's a pretty low spec game. I know I can run this while recording and not have any issues. So now that FTL is open, I can add game capture. And you see FTL under the drop down menu here. As I said, the application must be open, otherwise it's not going to show up in here. Uh, it's worth mentioning. You know, it, it seems kind of self-explanatory to me, but I could understand how a newcomer wouldn't uh, would would wonder why their game isn't showing up. So your game has to be open for this to be there. You can use a hotkey to select this game uh, automatically. So let's say you were streaming and your game capture was here and you wanted to switch games you could press a hotkey and it'll automatically switch the game I typically don't do that I usually just open up the properties and go to the drop down menu and select it but it's there in case you need it I strongly recommend stretching the image to the screen this will force the game image to fill the entire OBS screen strongly recommend using that ignore aspect ratio I've never selected that uh, basically this is so you can resize your image and make it um, not forced to the size of the game application. Um, as I've said, I've never used that. Capture mouse cursor, uh, that's so it'll capture your mouse cursor. Um, if you don't have this selected, uh, you know, your mouse cursor won't show up, but this, this game in particular draws the mouse in the game anyway. Uh, invert cursor on click. This will make it so your cursor changes from white to black when you click. Uh, personal preference I assume. Anti-cheat compatibility hooking. Uh, use only if necessary. So this is good if let's say uh, a new game has come out and it's having issues getting captured by OBS. Using this will help you, um, well may help you capture that game uh, properly. Uh, OBS is usually pretty good with this. Uh, there's uh, a library of anti-cheat things that they, they utilize. So uh, typically you shouldn't need this, but it's there as an option. Enable alpha blending. This is in case there's some uh, DirectX instructions in the game that um, aren't showing up properly. I typically never have this selected, but let's say for instance it's not going to work, but uh, your Steam overlay, right? So your Steam overlay comes up and it doesn't show up in the game. Enabling alpha blending, you know, well, isn't going to work in this instance, but it you know, it might work for a certain game. Not Steam Overlay, as I've said, but, uh, oh crap, there we go. But uh, certain games might use that, and, you know, that's why that's there. Typically, you'll never need that. Gamma is your brightness. Uh, it's sometimes good to set your brightness a little higher if you're playing a darker game, because the X264 encoding process will tend to, to darken a game uh, to YouTube or Twitch. So, you know, to make it a little bit closer to the actual image um, when you're streaming, you can turn that up so your viewers aren't like, hey, why is it so dark? You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's why that's there. Um, so that covers game capture and window capture. Let's see. Uh, I guess we can get, in, get into editing the, uh, editing the scene. Oh, so see what happens here? I have my window capture under game capture. It's not going to show up in that order. You have to move uh, move it up. So anything that's from the top down will layer in that order. So this first layer will be on top of the game capture. Uh, if you wanted to edit your scene, this red box comes up and you can, you know, stretch this image, you know, to whatever size you want. You can... You can change your position and size. Uh, this is just something you're going to have to go through. So you can center it. You can, um, you know, move it to your left edge and whatever. So that's something that you're going to have to play around with because we're short on time. And, you know, I want to keep this as uh, concise as possible. So moving on. 
I guess, um, what else is there? Image, image slideshow, text. Okay, so we'll, we'll make another scene. Let's say you wanted to make an intro, uh, an intro to your, um, your stream. You can have an image and select, I don't know, whatever image. Select this one. Uh, your opacity for the image, check file for changes. This is in case you're running some sort of a scripted application that's going to be changing your image. Typically you won't need that, but sometimes you might. Color key is your chroma key again. So there you go. Now the image is up. Um, you know, so you could have this as like a, a an away from keyboard screen or something. You know, hey, I'll be right back. Um, let's add an image slideshow. So with this, you can select multiple images. Um, we'll just select all these. You can change the time between the images. You're fading. I usually just leave it fade in only. And now with this, you can have you know like a an intro to your uh, your stream. So let's let's add a text. I personally don't like Arial, so <laughs> I avoid Arial. Let's go with uh, stream is starting soon. All right, and there you go. Now you might be thinking, well, that text is small. Let's make it bigger. So you want to drag this up, right? Never do that. Never ever do that. See what happened? You can see all the artifacting in the text. That's that's not good. You don't want to have that. So we're gonna right click, reset size. See what happened there? It's off the screen because I moved it around. If that ever happens to you, just go into here, center, and it'll show back up. So going back into properties, what you always want to do is change the font via the font size. Always do that. And if you notice here, the text is getting cut off because I'm using an italic font. So uh, if you're ever using italics, just add a couple spaces after and it'll fix that. Um, as far as text, we're not going to go over all this. This is self-explanatory. Your outline is, you know, a border around the text. Um, custom text extents, this is kind of important. So the right one here is your height. It always has to be at least the size of your font. Otherwise, it's not going to show up. Uh, it's not going to show the entire font. And then over here, let's go with, I don't know, say 400. So as you can see, now it's just showing stream even though there's more text there. So you can, uh, you know, maybe for instance, go into a scroll speed, and now it's gonna scroll across. Uh, it's important to note, if you're gonna use scroll speed, always use a multiple of your frame rate. Otherwise, it's gonna look kinda choppy on stream. Uh, it's just a general rule of thumb, and typically don't go uh, too fast with it. Make sure you can read it, you know, um, use text from file. So this is good if you're going to be using, uh, let's say, a song request application or something similar. Um, this will show the song name, perhaps maybe a uh, latest donator or you know latest follower, stuff like that. Uh, so it'll show the text of you know that person's name. Uh, this is kind of getting more into plugins, so maybe we'll cover that in a different video. So let's go ahead and kill the scroll speed and kill the text extent. There we go. So that's you know a basic intro scene. So let's rename this to intro. I personally like to order it from top to bottom. So like my intro and then my gaming scene, right? Uh, as far as window capture, maybe uh, maybe you might want to use. Um, uh, let me see. Where did my thing go? There it is. Maybe you might want to use uh, like a, a chat, right? So you want to have a chat on screen. You can open up your... Give me just a sec. I'm opening up a, you know, just a popular streamer. You can open up a pop-out chat. And select the pop-out. So now you have your text on screen, but that might, you know, that doesn't look too good. You're wondering why it's dark? It's uh, because I'm using better Twitch TV. Uh, link's going to be in the description. So in order to get to that, you just click your settings, and then there's a pop-out menu. Uh, and then you can select black chroma key. 
and then under window you can get into your chroma select the black and now all, everything that's black is transparent uh, we can also use select subregion so we're not getting the entire window like the address bar and the chat stuff at the bottom there and you know there you go that's that's just kinda showing you uh, for instance how you would use window capture and game capture at the same time now keep in mind this doesn't even need to be um, on your screen here you can you can stick it off over here and hide it and it'll still work you can stick it on another screen and it still works so that's as long as you have windows arrow enabled uh, what else can we do I guess um, we didn't cover video capture device so let's open that up before I do this I think it's important to note that there is global sources so instead of these sources that are set to each scene you can have a global source what a global source does is it uh, runs the source through uh, each scene so basically uh, whatever scene is it's in as soon as you select that scene and enable that source it will stay on until you close OBS or stop the stream so what would you use global sources for I, I typically use it for any type of video capture device so let's say a webcam or let's say you have a video uh, a video capturing uh, card like an Avermedia or you know an Elgato or something like that you're gonna want that to be a global source because what happens is when you switch between scenes um, the source is gonna shut off and then turn back on which generally isn't desirable so under global sources we're going to add a video capture device we're gonna call it cam and there you go so under uh, your video uh, capture device these are all your settings if you go into configure either your driver settings will pop up or the stock OBS settings I personally don't like the Logitech drivers I prefer to use OBS over it uh, but it's important to note that if you reset your system or shut down OBS it might erase all of your settings so I recommend writing down anything you change in here uh, so you know you have a, a, a recording of it that way if it ever gets messed up you have it available to you uh, you know a second time so that way you're not messing with it you know ten times so moving on you can flip your image horizontally or vertically if desired point filtering opacity deinterlacing just look that up I'm not gonna explain it uh, custom resolution I always use a square resolution uh, it's just a personal preference but you can use any resolution you'd like your FPS is should be as high as possible mine's at 30 audio input device I recommend always having this disabled um, webcams in general tend to have a lot of distortion they they they're built for capturing video not for recording audio so they almost always sound like crap so disable this almost every time that's my personal recommendation uh, output format and buffering I never use you can use it if you need to chroma key this is important if you have a green screen so let's go ahead and add this global source so I have it under global sources here and then if you go here you'll see global source cam and wow look at that I'm on the screen cool awesome so as you notice I have a green screen so what I like to do under my configuration settings I always recommend to turn your gain all the way down the reason why is if you have the gain up it's going to uh, cause a lot of noise in the video line so removing the gain is uh, kind of a priority for me white balance is almost always set to auto by default I never have it on auto I set my own white balance to a you know generally around 3000 uh, what you're gonna need to do is uh, let's see so you're gonna need to have a uh, um, a lamp of some sort next to your desk desk because you need a lot of light for the camera to capture it um, without making too much noise if you don't have a green screen you're not gonna have to worry about it as much but um, your lights are gonna have oh, 
shoot, you're not going to be able to see that. Your lights are going to have a temperature setting on them. Um, basically, the warmer the temperature, the uh, the warmer the the video source. I, I'm not sure how to explain this. So basically, temperature is based on the 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 oh geez. So if you heat up lead to a certain degree, um, that's what they base the color temperature off of. So if you turn it way up, that's kind of like outside light. If you turn it way down, that's more like incandescent light, indoor lighting. So I go right around, uh, you know, 3100-ish is my personal setting. It's going to be variant on your lights. Uh, zoom, I never use. Focus, I never have autofocus on. That way you never get blurry on screen. My exposure, I can see that I'm kind of uh, dark over there, so I'm going to turn my exposure up. Uh, maybe about there. That looks good enough to me. Pan and tilt. Uh, doesn't work for mine. Low light compensation is off for me. So there you go. That's all set up, ready to go. I should be writing those down, but I don't care. So, chroma key. Notice how my green screen isn't uh, isn't really green screening very well. This is where you're really going to see the um, the similarity and blend come into effect. So my similarity is, you know, the variance of this color green. So by turning this up more and more and more, it's taking more green from one side, more green from the other side, until it gets most of that green out. And then I can also go into uh, blend, maybe turn blend up a little. Uh, blend's going to be... Uh, kind of around the edges, and then sp spill reduction is uh, gonna fade out the edges a little. So I mean that's not perfect, but we're gonna we're gonna go with that. So there you go. Now that's set up, and I guess that's kind of your your basic setup. Uh, as far as editing scene, I think that's probably worth covering. If you edit scene, you can click on each uh, source, and then edit it from there. You see the red box showing up. If you don't see the red box, it's because edit scene is not highlighted. So from there, you can, you know, drag your your chat around. You can do whatever you need to do. Um, I think I think that covers everything. It covers pretty much everything you you should have stock with OBS. So I guess from here on, we're gonna need to get into. Um, Yeah, we're gonna have to get into plugins for anything from here on. So, like, let's say like a follower alert, uh, stuff like that. You're gonna need special plugins uh, more often than not. So, I guess we'll end it there. Um, I guess, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope that I'll have part three out sometime soon. Um, maybe you're watching this later on and you already have part three available. So, make sure to watch that and figure out how to install your your plugins properly. I'll also go through some recommended plugins that I personally use, and that's about it. I'm just kind of, you know, talking for no reason. So, yeah. Okay. Bye.